see that that worked before I begin. Uh, so, yeah, so look, I guess just touching on what the other speakers have already said, um, I'm, I'm very grateful uh, to be here and to be uh, uh, given the opportunity to share some of the work that we've done uh, in this space, but I think particularly to learn um, from what uh, other people have done. So it's been a great session so far, and I hope this, uh, this session adds some value as well. Uh, okay, so I come from, uh, I hope you can see right down here, I come from uh, Suncorp, um, which is a insurance company in Australia, and we're based in Brisbane. Uh, in terms of the scale of the company, I guess, uh, from an Australian uh, point of view, we're the largest uh, general insurer in Australia, so I guess that really just means it's property insurance rather than life insurance, I suppose. Uh, to give some idea of this, uh, the scale also, we have around 16,000 uh, full-time uh, employees with Suncorp as well. So that's, that's where I'm from. Okay. This is, um, this is what we set out to do with process mining. Uh, and I've sort of set, set up the presentation in terms of looking at the challenge that we faced, uh, the opportunities that we had. Uh, and then I guess the approach that we took and then through to the outcomes that we found. So, so this, this here is really the, the setup, I guess. So the challenge, the challenge really for us is, um, <clears throat> and perhaps a little differently to some of the other presenters already uh, today, our challenge was, was not just to do process mining, I think, but to integrate it into our existing process management uh, methodology, team, framework, etc. Uh, so, which is, um, so I'll talk quite a bit more about that. Um, the other thing we wanted to do uh, in, terms of, in terms of actually putting it in place though was to actually measure process performance and identify problems and root causes. Uh, okay, so Suncorp is actually, uh, comprises many brands in fact in Australia. Uh, and in fact, this one here is, um, is the Amy brand. And what you're looking at here is, a, is an advertisement. And Amy typically uses uh, adverts sort of reminding people uh, that they can have accidents. And this is how we, we uh, I guess, sell more insurance. So, um, but it's conveniently for me, I guess this is also, in terms of the process that we'll be looking at today, um, the, the, the space within Suncorp that I'm coming from is the, is the insurance claims process. Uh, and particularly that's, that's with reference to motor claims. So, uh, so this is in fact where it starts for our customers. To take you through very briefly uh, the rest of the, the, uh, the process. Uh, so essentially the customer has an accident, calls us, then we inspect the damage, and then you can see here it's going to go through a couple of paths in fact. So really there's uh, potentially repairing the vehicle, uh, or just paying the customer money to, um, you know, to, to uh, allow them to buy a new vehicle. Um, this one here, this is actually uh, the best photo I could find for negotiating. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, and this is really, so this is customers and this is uh, third parties and other insurance companies and so forth. So once, once we've uh, decided what we're going to do, we also go down this path and there can be some exchange of monies on this side as well. So, Okay, so that that would give the impression potentially that it's a fairly simple, uh, fairly simple operation, uh, and that there's not not too much to it. Uh, so the analysis could be quite simple. Uh, not really the case. We've actually got, uh, I guess, about eight major process variants in terms of perhaps severity of damage, uh, how the, how the actual, we interact with the customer and so forth. We've actually got nine brands of which Amy was one out of the 16,000, 2,500 people are working in the, the claims processing area and volume wise uh, also 600,000 plus uh, of those claims per year. Okay, so that's, that's a bit of background, that's the challenge. Uh, really what I wanted to uh, just touch on now is the opportunity and so what we do have as I said was a process management team and methodology uh, and in particular I guess one of the things that, that we're very heavy on is improving and defining. So probably our um, okay, our methodology or our resourcing is heavy in this space here. Um, so it's, it's quite a good support to things that we may do in that space. 
The other uh, very significant opportunity for us is, uh, is actually working with our um, partners, our academic partners, and I'm very pleased to have uh, Artur here from QUT today to, uh, I guess, be representing uh, uh, his research group that we've actually worked on in terms of BPM, but also uh, process mining in the past. And I think uh, in terms of what we've discussed today, in terms of access to data, I think a very significant opportunity that we had was a single claims processing uh, IT platform. Uh, and to, uh, to give some idea of the scale of it, so in the two years that we've been running the motor processes through that scale, we actually have uh, generated 50 million uh, rows worth of uh, event data. <coughs> okay, so what we wanted to, um, to do perhaps a little uh, uh, differently, I would say, is to, um, we didn't really want to start with process mining experts and then bring them up to speed with the process, which, which as you can imagine is, is very complicated. We actually decided, okay, let's, let's, take the, um, let's take the process experts, so the people working in the business, and actually make those people competent uh, with process mining. Uh, so that was really the first um, aspect of what we were trying to do. The second thing was, in terms of uh, our approach also, when we were looking at tools, we wanted something intuitive, uh, so not like this. And uh, so really, Disco, I think, was probably uh, you know the, uh, what enabled us to, to to satisfy this requirement. The other thing that we wanted, the other aspect to the the approach that we wanted to take, was also I guess to use a big data rather than a small data uh, BI type of approach. So having, I, I imagine there's a lot of people that have had this experience in the past where. You've got business intelligence platforms which are, which are based on some pre-configured uh, assumptions about what types of questions you want to ask, and uh, so you know counts of this and volumes of that and prices of something else. Um, and then, provided that's the only type of question you want to ask, then that's fine. You can just ask away. What what we actually, I guess, our experience has been that in fact, once you try and get into the process space rather than just counting things, then you actually need you're oftentimes generating different queries, and you go back and and actually uh, you need different, different, completely different data on a different scale. Uh, and so, so that's, a, that's a pretty poor time frame. So two real, really uh, briefly, two aspects to this. First thing is we wanted to throw all the data in there at once. So we didn't want to generate one data set for this analysis and then go and ask, you know, generate a query, ask some more questions. We wanted to have the whole lot available uh, from the start. The other thing is that we wanted to, um, to really be able to iterate quickly, um, and so and so we we really managed to achieve that. So rather than sort of asking a question and getting an answer and asking a subsequent question, you know, on a, after a, a week or a day or a month, um, so we were able to do this in minutes uh, using using Disco. So I think that was a great strength as well. Uh, so what does this mean for uh, in terms of actual business impact? So I guess the in a nutshell, uh, really, the projects that, that we're involved in in the change space, they'll generally uh, have a, uh, a time frame of something like several weeks in terms of the analysis phase. So really, if we're spending months getting our data, um, uh, basically the, the um, you know, I guess the, uh, the ship has departed and uh, so we, don't, we won't have any data or influence uh, as far as that's concerned. So generally that'll just proceed on assumptions. So what, we, what Disco uh, and the approach that we took with the, the big data, what that allows us to do is actually to, um, is actually to, to have involvement with, um, uh, well I guess to align to our process uh, management and change uh, timeframes and methodology. Okay, moving on to outcomes. This slide here is probably uh, the most, uh, I would say, the most uh, critical, really, of, of all the things that we learned through process mining. Uh, the first one is, so, so really, for us, there were three levels of um, sort of cultural or people level transformation within the organization. Uh, the first one is just understanding. So it's that first step of, uh, of uh, okay, what is process mining through to, okay, I think I get it. Um, what I would recommend there is it's much easier to show people than it is to try and explain it. Uh, but the reactions and, 
have been uh, really incredible in that space. So we've had the reaction, it's real, um, phenomenal. Uh, moving on from that, what, what we actually found, uh, perhaps the, uh, this experience is shared by some people judging from the, the talks this morning, but it's very much, once you get into this uh, competency space, uh, it's reality versus preconceptions. Uh, and so, we, so each of these two are quotes, that's not right. People told us that it's not right. Um, and that I don't trust it as well is a great one. Um, that said, what we, by actually trying to bring our, uh, let's say, our non-technical users up to speed with Disco, rather than keeping that as a separate sort of specialty technical function, um, what we enabled people to do is actually to explore and validate uh, their own preconceptions. And by doing that, people were able to get uh, uh, I think we're able to convince themselves that the, that the tool was uh, was correct. So I think it's you know in terms of how you socialise this within your organisation, I would really uh, uh, put some emphasis on that. So if you can, rather than just showing people outputs, show give, allow them to explore it. Um, and finally, uh, this one here is probably uh, I don't want to claim that we've transformed everything, but what we did do is to is to um, you know, so if I just by way of an anecdote, I guess an analyst in the BPM space of 15 years uh, said to me the other day that uh, that that you know I realise now that process models are just an idealised uh, high level view. So for somebody with that much uh, track record in in the BPM space to actually you know the impact of seeing process mining outputs uh, is is quite significant, I think. Uh, okay. Uh, what, I'm, what I'm going to talk about here is just based on a subset of claims, so, so really just as a, a proviso, this, this wouldn't, uh, so the outcomes you're seeing here won't be relevant to, to the entire claims process. Okay, so what did we do in the, uh, so opportunity, uh, or rather the approach wise, so the first one was to jump into analysis in our life cycle. Okay, so fantastic, we've got so much data. Um, so let's say a million claims, uh, but we found that we had 900,000 unique variants, which is a bit of a problem. Uh, and the, the reason behind that was that primarily is that the, the, in terms of our process, it's long, it's detailed and it's case managed as well. So people choose when they're going to do which activities. Uh, there's, there's some structure, but that's, that's really a, a key, key issue. The other one is uh, multiple parallel sub-processes per claim. So you would have seen that first, uh, maybe the third or fourth slide that we do something in common, then we separate and we do different paths. So that, um, so once you've got those uh, sort of uh, those two processes going in parallel, that can be uh, a little misleading in terms of the outputs that you get. So what we what we did manage to do though was we took around 270 sort of events in our or different types of events and we worked with the um, worked with our business uh, users um, or our sort of analysts close to the business and we actually got them to tell us what were the the significant uh, events and milestones in the system and so so from 270 down to around 11 I think so you can see that we're basically opening uh, or reopening we shouldn't really be doing that uh, and uh, closing here but significantly, you can see that we're starting to see the, the parallel process structure. So by actually doing analysis downstream of this, we can actually, um, I guess, explore those sub-processes in some detail. So that, that was probably a really critical step. Um, and I encourage you again to involve those people. Um, in terms of outcomes, so more, more than half the, the, the total process duration is one of those parallel sub-processes. So in terms of improvement, total duration, you can just forget all the rest and then just do that one. Uh, and that was fed back to a, a big uh, process improvement uh, initiative, uh, in fact. So the other space that we looked at uh, using Disco in was the process um, monitoring space. So what we were able to do in this space was that we implemented a new uh, variant of a process and we then went uh, after after five days, uh, uh, five days uh, or thereabouts, we basically pulled the data out of the system, just chucked it into Disco, had a look, and were able just to quickly to see that there weren't too many exceptions, and then just check some of the performance versus SLA for some of the suppliers, and to see that that was reasonable, and then provide instant feedback 
to operational management. So probably, uh, you know, uh, just that's, a, that's sort of a half hour operation right there. So that was, that was very effective. Uh, okay, so we, in terms of, that's really the process. From there we drill down, but, but drill down on what? We drill down on brand and on region and on the org structure, perhaps similar to what other people have, have done here already. Uh, what we found was, in terms of sources of variation, we found that across those different attributes that we could uh, explore the process from, uh, there's, there's quite a lot of uh, uh, difference. So vendor, uh, I guess vendor performance was quite different, brand less so, and region quite a bit less so again. Okay, so, so this is really, uh, if we want a fast process then, I think what we've done is we've, we've learned some things, so we can really say, to, to have a fast process, what do we need to do? And so here's, here it is really, um, in terms of uh, impacts on process performance, really it's significant the process uh, performance and the, the variance in the process itself are really the key drivers there. And in terms of uh, looking uh, a little deeper there, so we've got different external suppliers and sort of ad hoc process variation rather than designed in variation, sort of having perhaps the biggest effect. Okay. So we thought about, that's great, that's performance, um, but what's the process really in aid of? Um, so it's, the process is, is actually there, uh, first and foremost, I guess, to satisfy our customers. Uh, so what we did was to take some, uh, we took customer satisfaction data on a per claim level and crunched that in with the, uh, all the existing data set that we've been working on. And so we found, we found some things which were not surprising, so here we've got uh, duration of a claim, <coughs> satisfaction level, as you'd expect, you've got uh, satisfaction decreasing over time uh, or as, as that claim drags on and on and on. Okay, this was a bit more of a surprise. So if we look at brand, uh, brand B versus brand A, uh, exactly the same comparison. So brand A customers are drastically less satisfied. Brand B customers, not, not uh, less satisfied at all. So, uh, you know, and I think this, this is really an, an incredible lesson because uh, as, as we've, you know, some of the, the um, experiences we've shared this morning, I think sort of performance and cost are probably the major focus. And I think there's often a tacit assumption that satisfaction is just sort of tailing right mm -hmm. behind that. But, uh, but certainly for these people, that's not the case at all. So, um, so I think exploring some of the subtleties in the relationship uh, between satisfaction and actual process performance and measurement is a, is a fruitful area. Very briefly, we've got a, also some non-linearities uh, as well. So here, we're fairly happy through this period and then it falls uh, off a cliff. So, so good insights there, I think, for what we wanna, how we want to uh, monitor performance, how we want to design our products and that sort of thing. Okay, so we had a look at the fast, designing a fast process. So let's, let's jump forward to uh, designing a, uh, a happy process. Uh, and so what's the difference? Okay, so some, some things are actually quite similar here. Uh, so you can see that the ad hoc process variation, variation indeed, indeed flows right through and uh, actually does not does in fact have an impact. Some of the, uh, the who, the who's actually performing the process is less uh, impactful uh, in a satisfaction space than a performance space. And, uh, but what actually uh, looms a lot larger is different brands and we can speculate that, that potentially uh, different customer demographics but also different service levels potentially uh, can be contributing to that. So in, interestingly, this, you know, I think the interesting thing there is that we, we don't really control that. We target a, a set of customers and they're going to bring us their, their uh, expectations to some extent. Uh, but the service levels, certainly we can, we can manage. Uh, so my challenges, uh, or our challenges rather, will not surprise anybody. So getting the data was certainly a challenge. Uh, and. Uh, yeah, I don't have any easy answers or, or shortcuts there. Uh, culture was uh, was really a challenge, and I think that's not that's not in the past tense. That's an ongoing uh, challenge, and that's something we probably need to continue to work on. Uh, and the other challenge that we started to bump into is, and perhaps uh, similar to what some of the people uh, presenting earlier have described, 
uh, we've had, um, we've had. I think that's my time's up, so I'll just be, finish off quickly. Uh, so where we've got uh, an a detailed analysis we perform, but we would like to do that again. So the, the uh, sort of being able to sort of just reapply the analysis to a different set of data is something we'd really like to be able to do. Um, so to finish on the successes though, uh, first one's incredibly simple. We had a credible view of the process. So I think within the organisation, uh, prior to, uh, prior to uh, having process mining, I would say that we did not have cons uh, visual, um, we didn't have a view on it. Uh, and we also didn't have consistency or trust or what have you in, in perhaps the sources of data that were around. So, so this is really critical. Uh, it's just a, it's an enabler that allows us to do other things, but I think very important. Uh, empowered process stakeholders is, is really interesting and really satisfying. Uh, so in terms of skilling up some of our analysts, uh, you know, it's, it's uh, I think it's, uh, I really enjoyed uh, sort of getting people up to speed and then asking them, uh, you know, so within two weeks they would stop asking me questions and they'd say, oh, can I just use your disco license? So that's, so that's how fast it can happen. Uh, we exploited the claims data, which was a huge resource. So we spent a lot of time and money generating that data. So we managed to, to actually use that. And, uh, and I think to some extent we've just started on the journey towards uh, evidence-based uh, thinking in terms of managing processes. And so, so a lot, uh, so really in terms of next steps, I think it's really continuing uh, a lot of these things that we've already started. So thanks very much. Would it? existing process excellence type group within the organization, let's say Six Sigma driven or Lean Six Sigma driven, and if yes, how did the integration work or where you follow the same group and are you needing to combine these two methodologies? Yes, yeah, indeed. That's that's a great question and, and I think in terms of what we're able to achieve, that's, that's very much a core question. So if you were to ask people within within our division of Suncorp what, what we were up to. Uh, nobody would say we were doing process mining particularly. Uh, what they'd say is that most people would say that we're about change and change management. And that's because uh, essentially we have a hub and spokes uh, change function which op operates out of essentially a hub. Uh, and so, so two thirds of the resources would be in that space, I think. So, so, so that's really, uh, it's a real benefit because we can actually make, uh, can have insights into analysis, but that it allows us to actually change that, we've got a mature function in that area. So in terms of, let's say, the process, sort of process versus uh, just change, uh, then we've got a smaller process or quality or governance type function that would sit uh, uh, alongside that. With, so, uh, yeah, and so uh, probably there's, there's um, in terms of uh, methodology, so we have a we've got a, a sort of an end-to-end -end life cycle. We've got a change management uh, methodology, and so really, uh, so for us, Disco was a tool that we slotted into our analysis stage of the of the, of the process management life cycle. And uh, yeah, so so for us, that was really made things easier, and I think it was a real advantage. What uh, were the lessons learned or what would you do different uh, next time because this was a pilot? Yeah, indeed. <coughs> I, guess if, I guess if the question is what would we do differently that would have made it <coughs> so much easier that, that we could have done it twice as fast or what have you. Uh, I think lessons learned in that respect, like I, I can't really offer any, uh, any easy ones. Uh, I do think that, I think what was definitely uh, a successful approach, I think, was actually engaging the, the people in the business to actually work with the tool and use the, use the tool. Uh, so, and that, that I think is just part of the general socialising uh, aspect of bringing in process mining. Uh, I, I think we, perhaps because of the culture of Suncorp, uh, it was, I guess that's the way that we would tend to work with technology. 
But I'm very interested to sort of heard some of the stories this morning about using process mining uh, in other contexts where it's seen as intrusive or, or dangerous or, or what have you. Uh, so, 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 yeah, so perhaps the easiest way to put it would be that that's, that's how we, uh, as, a, as an organisation, would have tackled it in any case. Uh, but I encourage people to, to think about uh, using that approach, um, you know, really involving uh, business level users uh, in the process mining and, and skilling them up as a, as a strategy. Thank you. One more question, perhaps, <laughs> anyone? Um, you put on your slide that uh, in your database you had more than 50 million um, rows in your e mm. log. Does it Does it mean that your data was actually already structured as an event log in your database, in your, what was it, guide file or mm. something like that? That's, yeah, that's, that's a great question. So, so no. So we didn't uh, have a system which <laughs> generated a, a perfect event log uh, for us. Uh, I think I think probably our process, the process that we followed, was was fairly similar to other people. So, uh, the the benefit of having that standardised platform is that we had uh, we were able to look at uh, financials and uh, sort of workflow items and and things across various sorts of areas, uh, various sorts of functionality. But literally, those things were for the most part just sitting in a single table in the back end system. So we really only touched sort of five tables in the back-end system to be able to pull out the 50 million rows. So, so versus, I think, perhaps, Lully, you've talked about multiple systems and presumably multiple multiple tables. So, yes, it wasn't all automatic, uh, simple extraction, but certainly perhaps an easier process for us. Um, but that said, it wasn't, uh, you know, it was iterative and, and uh, you anyway, know, made mistakes along the way as well. Okay, thank, thanks a lot. Thanks. Thank you.